The following guide is in imperial feet and inches. If you would rather see it in metric centimetres, please click on the link and switch over now. Hello again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tile a roof. I know this has been covered by other videos on YouTube, but most of them don't actually tell you what you need to know. And that is how to lay out the roof ready for tiling. Without this, any roof will either be a mess to look at or even worse, leak. Let's just have a quick look at this roof a bit closer up. What you're looking at is even tile spacing and the correct overlap of the roof tiles. This is essential for any pitch roof with tiles or slates. And without this, you won't be tiling any roof worth having. If you set out the roof wrong, you will end up with something like this. And apart from its many, many faults, the tiles are too stretched in this section, causing it to leak. And here, the stretching became so bad that an extra row of tiles were shoved in here. You would be amazed, and I know I still am, how many roofers and builders fall into this trap. So let's not follow them, and this is how to tile a roof. Starting here with good old Photoshop, I'm going to deconstruct this roof and show you how it was created, so you can do exactly the same thing with your roof. Let's take this picture to be your newly stripped roof ready for tiling. Make sure that the roof rafters or trusses are fully clean of any splinters or old nails that may ruin the membrane or under tileless felt that's going to go on next. The next step is to roll out your chosen under sarking, starting at the bottom. This can be, for instance, a traditional reinforced felt, sometimes known as 1F, or under tileless felt, or under slater's felt if you're under slates, or a newer breathable membrane such as this. Here I've chosen 1F under tileless felt for illustration purposes. Starting at the left or right, roll out a length of undersarking. Now secure one edge with one inch galvanised clout nails. Nail it in firmly, but not so hard that it damages or rips the undersarking. Gently pull your chosen undersarking taut from the other end. However, you do not want it tight. What you're looking for is a suggestion of sag between the rafters. This is so in the event of water making it past the tiles, either by breakages or other exceptional weather conditions for instance, the water will be drawn into the dips in the undersarking and down and into the gutters and away. Once you have the desired tautness, fix the other end of the undersarking with some more nails and then fill in with a few more nails. There's no need for too many nails though as the battens or lasts that you're going to be putting on later will hold the undersarking firmly in place. Next we need to work out the tile spacing and batten spacing for your roof. This is called the gauge. This is normally specified by the tile manufacturer or the tile supplier. For my example, I'm going to show you the most common for this type of tile. Firstly, get two of the roof tiles you will be using and two roofing battens, sometimes known as roofing laths. Now place these onto the roof without nailing them. This will mean you can adjust the gaps between the buttons at will. Make sure the tiles are overlapping and that the tile lugs are seated and properly hooked onto the top of the buttons. Now set the bottom tile overhang. Normally this works out at about 2 inches. There is no critical measurement for this. It needs enough overhang so rainwater enters the gutters without dribbling down the fascias whilst allowing easy gutter cleaning and maintenance should that be required. Here are the roof tiles set into the gutter. Now let's set the overlap for the tile. On this smooth grey it's 3 inches. If the tile is sand faced, facing in a windy direction or on shallow pitch, or maybe prone to moss build-up, it could be advisable to increase this to 4 inches. The initial spacing for the buttons, with a 3 inch tile overlap, is 13 and a quarter inches, measured from the top of one button to the top of the other. This is called the tile gauge. Now fix the buttons in place using a galvanised nail that penetrates through the button and into the rafters underneath, for a minimum of one and a half inches. To make sure the bottom two buttons are parallel, 
measure off a reference point like a wall or fascia at the bottom of the roof underneath the undersarking. Now this is the bit a lot of builders and roofers get wrong. With the bottom two battens now fixed in the correct position, measure from the top of the batten to within one and a quarter inches of the apex of the roof. As you can see here, by not putting the tape at the very top, you allow a small gap to fit the tile lugs into, plus a little bit of extra room so roof expansion or contraction doesn't damage the tile lug should that occur. Let's say, for example, that the distance is 177 and a half inches between the finishing position and the top of the last batten. And as we worked out earlier, the desired space between the battens is 13 and a quarter inches. So we need to divide 177 and a half by 13 and a quarter, which equals 13.39. Now 13.39 isn't a very workable figure, so we round it up to 14. This means we need 14 rows of batten to tile to the top of the roof. We now know we require 14 rows of batten, so we divide the remaining distance of 177.5 inches by 14, which gives us the figure of 12.67. Again. 12.67 isn't usable in feet and inches, so we round it up to 12.75, or 12 and 3 quarter inches. To double check this figure, you can multiply 12.75 by 14 to give you the figure of 178.5, or 178 and a half inches. As you can see, this is only one inch out over the entire height of the roof, so a slight adjustment can be made to the last two rows without any physical or visual impact. By using your batten gauge of 12 and 3 quarter inches, we can work our way to the top of the roof. Overlap any undersarking by 6 inches or thereabouts every time you lay a new length. Your roof is now set out and ready for tiling. As for ridge tiles and verges, I'm sure I will cover these another time, but here is the roof tiled. In the UK, it's traditional to nail every third row from the bottom row of tiles and then the top row. Obviously, this may be different in other countries that may be experienced different weather conditions. Make sure when nailing your tiles down that it penetrates into the roofing button but not out of the other side as this will damage your new undersarking. If your roof has an edge or verge, try to overhang the tiles by one and a half to two inches and always try to space the tiles so a high profile part of the tile is on the very edge. This will direct any rainwater from dribbling over the edge and onto the walls of the building. Sometimes a cut may be required to achieve this, but again, cut it on the highest part of the tile. And if you're using a flat profiled interlocking tile, always try to stagger every course so that the vertical joints do not sit directly above each other. Well, once again that brings another project to an end. I hope this video has helped in some way and thanks for watching.